So in this first video, I'm going to do a little bit of review of sort of what we did at the end of class, talking about non-conservative chemicals and how they're retained in groundwater and how that slows them down a little bit, even um, from their maximum rate of seepage velocity. Okay, so we want to account for retention of pollutants. So that is essentially sorbing to soil. So the way that we do that is by reducing seepage velocity to account for sorption. So we're dividing the seepage velocity V by a retardation coefficient R, so that we're slowing the rate of flow. And in this case, R is unitless. And here's what that equation looks like. So we've got R equal to partitioning coefficient here. This is the distribution um, partitioning coefficient of a chemical between sediment particles, so the concentration in sediment, divided by the concentration in water. And dB here is the bulk density of the sediment, and N is the porosity, so volume per volume. And here it's a, it's a percentage. Before we had talked about it, I'm sorry, here it's proportion. Before we had talked about it as a percentage, in this equation, we want it to be a proportion. So how do we go about estimating KD, this partitioning coefficient between the chemical sorbing to soil and staying in soil water? OK, so for many pollutants, what really matters is not so much how much of it sticks to soil, but how much of it sticks to organic carbon. Because as you can see here, that's where most of the cation exchange capacity in a soil is in the organic matter, which is also called soy, soil humus. So KOC is the partitioning coefficient between organic carbon and soil water. So it's the concentration of the chemical in organic carbon or on organic carbon stuck to it and the concentration of it in water. So we then use, once we get KOC, we use it to estimate KD. So how do we get KOC? Okay, well, perhaps unsurprisingly, we get it, we estimate it using KOW, which is something that we've kind of turned to again and again to estimate different partitioning coefficients. So KOW, just as a reminder, is a partitioning coefficient between octanol, which is a non-polar solvent, and water, which is a polar solvent. So it's the concentration of a chemical in octanol over the concentration of that chemical in water at equilibrium. And there are a bunch of empirical equations that are used to predict KOC, or log KOC here in this case, using log KOW, and there are different equations for different sort of categories of, of pollutants like pesticides, aromatic hydrocarbons, insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides. And I'll always be telling you which one of these you'll be using. Um, so don't worry about sort of trying to remember these. OK, so the first thing that we do is that we use KOW to estimate KOC. And then we use KOC in combination with the fraction of a sediment that is organic carbon. So if a soil had 20% organic carbon, the fraction of organic carbon would be 0.2. So we would put that or multiply that by the KOC that we estimated to get KD. Okay, and then we would put that KD into that equation for R right here. Solve for R and then just divide the seepage velocity by R to get the pollutant velocity, which would be a slower rate since we're talking about a non-conservative chemical, something that sticks to soil or to organic carbon. Okay, so overall, this is sort of all the steps that you would take to estimate the flow rate of a pollutant, a non-conservative pollutant that sticks to soil or organic matter, sorbs to soil or organic matter. So the first thing you would do is you would estimate or you would calculate specific discharge Q and then you would account for sort of reduced flow or constricted flow in that soil by calculating the seepage velocity that is dividing specific discharge by the porosity of that soil again a fraction not a percentage and then calculate the retardation factor R but to do that, you're going to need a value for KD. So how do you go about getting that value for KD? 
For most soils, you estimate it using KOC, and you in turn estimate KOC using KOW, and then use that value uh, that you, so you use one of those empirical equations to estimate KOC from KOW, and then you put that value of KOC into this equation that uses the fraction of organic matter in a sediment times the KOC to get KD, put that value into the equation for R, and then use that R, divide the seepage velocity by R to reduce the rate of flow, and that gives you your estimate of how quickly a pollutant is flowing in groundwater. Okay, so here's an example that I'm going to do offline so I can write it out for you. Um, so don't worry too much about it. It's just, this is just to let you know that there's an example that you can you can look at to see how this is done. And then this is just those steps again. So you have specific discharge, you get seepage velocity by dividing that value by porosity, calculate retardation, um, and here if a soil has less than 0.001, so that's even less than 1% organic matter, that means essentially there's no real organic carbon in the soil. So in this case, sorption to a soil by ion exchange, so what's sticking to the, the negative charge in a clay, for example, is going to be more important than what's sticking to carbon. And in this case, there really aren't any nice simple mathematical models to estimate KD, so in this class here you'll be given what you need to calculate KD. So you'd either be given KD or you'd be given the concentration of a chemical um, associated with the solids versus that concentration in soil water to calculate KD, which again is the concentration of a chemical um, sorbed to soil over the chemical of a the concentration of a chemical in water. And then you'd use that R, or you'd use that KD to calculate the R, and then reduce the seepage velocity by dividing it by R to get the uh, reduced rate of flow, the, the estimate of how quickly a pollutant would flow, a non-conservative pollutant would flow through groundwater. Okay, and then I'll give you, there's another example that you can look at to see how, that's done, how that is done. All right, and I'm going to stop this video here, and the next video will just be is a little bit talking about how well pumping impacts pollution transport.